Beautiful. Single vineyard. It's all in the terroir. It's the terroir. Now talk to me about that. And if I, you know, we should probably do this. I hate doing interviews where I'm behind the camera, but a lot, but as long as we can get, you know, let's get some footage. What got you into single vineyard? Why? And, and don't, don't just say, cause it doesn't look from the surroundings as if that's all you can afford. Why single vineyards? What was your biggest influencing factor behind that, Bobby? I wanted to um, make wine with what, was on, what came with the property. And it wasn't necessarily that I was looking for Pinot, because I actually came from a, more of a Cabernet Zinfandel kind of a taste palette. I've had to, been, I've been retraining myself for a couple of years now to understand Pinot, because it has a whole different makeup than cabs and zins. Talk about that a little bit. You know, Pinots are generally more expensive. Uh, you know, larger grapes. Um, Harder to raise. Harder to raise. Harder to, harder to make. Yeah, and, and those factors are why Pinot Noirs are more expensive, yeah? Well, the, the main issue was that when we bought the vineyard, that's what was here. And I wasn't going to go ahead and change it because I used to drinking Cab and Zin. I, I mean, the thought of tearing it out and replanting it with another variety was ridiculous. So I just decided I'm going to learn to love Pinot. And basically that's what happened. I, now I like Pinot. And I'm still learning. It's kind of a huge curve. Talk to me about the name, uh, Rock and Cave Vineyard. Where'd that come from? Oh, that was really easy. Since our last name is Keel. Rocking? Okay, all right. yeah. So the rocking is gonna come from what? Well, it, the first initial of our last name is Keel. And it just made sense to use the K because I had this vision at the Tipsy Pig on a cocktail napkin that I wanted it to be like a brand, kind of country, kind of cowboy, kind of Sonoma, kind of farmy, and like a branding iron kind of uh, look. And basically someone actually made us a, a branding iron, a full-blown branding iron. I got it's in the business as well as a little one for steaks and a big one for cattle or horses or whatever you happen to be wanting the brand. And, and, and it just looks perfect, man. It just looks perfect. It came out, I mean, like, you know, value of the moon, right? So there's a moon on the label and there's stars because there's a lot of stars and there's always a lot of stars and there's a lot of moon here. There's a lot of moon here, I can tell you that. <laughs> so this place is definitely the valley of the moon, no Someone, doubt about it. Someone's turning on the lamp all the time. We have about three, rolling. three quarters of an acre of planted Pinot. It's a Pomard clone. The wine is kind of in the French Burgundian style. Um, the grapes were planted 15 years ago. And uh, basically, you can see that they're really healthy this year. I mean, they're just really lush. Talk about how the weather has been beneficial to the uh, yield so far, because I noticed that you know, with the, uh, you know, the, that big heat, heat wave to start with, um, everything really got off to a really nice start, huh? Yes, the, the weather, I think a lot of the uh, growers this year are really excited because we didn't have the issues. Well, so far, we don't have them. The same issues as we had last year with that late rain causing the botrytis and a lot of people losing a pretty good portion of their crop. But this year, everything's real full and it's early. I think we're gonna pick early. I think we're probably going to pick instead of October, we'll probably harvest maybe mid-September. And uh, I, you can tell by the, by the size of the grapes right now. The, they're looking the a little coffee beanish still with, with their green color, but uh, still very, very healthy, fat clusters, um, dense, cl dense clusters in all these vines, huh? Very dense. All right, we let's go over here. Walk. Let's walk out and I'll show you the um, where we store the um, cases in this temperature controlled room that uh, I had made because I wanted to be close to the product and have it more accessible than having it in the uh, wine warehouse, which makes Oh, 
I saw this thing outside Steiner's. Yeah. Well, I'm not trying to admit that I was outside Steiner's all that much. But yeah, this was out there for... Uh, now, this is the one that, that they use in the... Uh, for, that's, this one is in the 4th for, for, for of July parade, right? This was in the parade. And the uh, Native Sons right in the back of this. Um, some, well, last year, we had Robert Arnold's grandson. I mean, half Arnold's grandson, Robert Arnold. And... Uh, Robin Olds, who was uh, our only like three war ace. His daughter was in the back, wrote a book about his life. The military is pretty strong here in Sonoma. They're very active in the vets and the veterans of foreign wars. Great cemetery, great memorial back there. It's beautiful. This, I don't know if you know it, but uh, we have the only uh, American Revolutionary War vet West of the Mississippi's buried there. One guy. There's one guy. Talk about East Coast bias. Yeah, hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's, uh, you know, it's interesting. Oh, the Infineon girls. Oh, yeah. So you big on racing. You know, I, you know, I mean, I coast Sports Zone 2, and we're always out there at the racetrack. Uh, we're just out there for NASCAR. We're going to be out there for the drags. Uh, we poured our Pinot in the hospitality tent at the historic races. That's my favorite event. People were really loving it. We had a lot of people that were hanging out at our table wouldn't go away. Well, I bet, I bet they wouldn't. So I had my order forms out, and they were signing up. Well, and that's the best place to sell Pinot, especially if it's 55 bucks a pop. Well, that's yeah. the way to go. And I said I'd make sure they got it delivered for no charge. Well, and the, but you know, Pinot is Pinot's expensive. Pinot's tough to make, you know, and, and uh, fifty-five is right on the line. You you have that definitely set up like on on the right level there, you know, so, you know, as far as pricing. Well, the tasting went beyond what I thought it was going to be. I thought they'd be drinking the margaritas and they had beer and they had all kinds of different wines. But it was mostly more well-known wines. I mean, we only make 135 cases, so not, our name's not really out there. I'm only in Well, it's going to be now, baby, or else I'm going to take it personally. <laughs> now let's go check out the, uh, the, uh, the uh, cell. Well, wait. What, what's, uh, what's that? Oh, that's the Batmobile. It looks like it. <clears throat> oh, there is no substitute. There is no substitute. Florida, you gotta have the you gotta have the Porsche in Florida, man. That's gorgeous. Wow. Yeah. Uh, be like Ferris Bueller's friend, the 1994 oh, he, Porsche oh, Roadster Four. Oh man, the Roadster. Wow. Nice. Boom. What a cool little setup in here, boss. I need to clean it up. It's embarrassing. How about that 1949 Frigidaire made by General Motors? General Motors made the Frigidaire refrigerator. Wow. That thing is 30 degrees every day. And it gets it done. But check it out. I, I, let's check it out. Look at this logo. It's like a... Look, it says right there. It's like a jukebox. Made by General Motors. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Uh, wow. Single vineyard wines as opposed to wines that maybe just use different vineyards. Oh. Where does it fall? Not in the sense of better or worse. Where does it fall? What are the differences? What are the advantages? Where does it fall into the grand scheme of things? Um, rather than using more general terms like better or worse, single vineyard wine is blank relative to non-single vineyard wine. Well, I mean... Probably the short answer to that would be that since the grapes are growing right next to my front door and when I walk out to get the paper in the morning and I look at them every single day, I know what's going on. I mean, the terroir is right on my property. So I know that no one has dumped any fuel oil on it. No one sprayed anything weird on it. I mean, just like had probably 40, 50 years of chicken poop on it and dirt. <laughs> so, I mean... Your word's not mine, dude. <laughs> I, uh, I'm thinking, hey, 
I keep saying the grapes are out of the dirt, into the stemmer, into the de-stemmer, into the barrel, into the bottle, and onto your, uh, onto your dining room table, into your glass, hopefully. If you had to let three wines beat you out for a very important contract, which three wines might they be? That I'm, uh, Wines that you could go to sleep at night saying, they beat me fair and square, fine. And you still love your wine and you still love theirs, but they beat you and you're okay with it. Give me th three wines that fall into that category. Let me think, uh, well, I like Rocchioli. That's a very good Pinot Noir. And I like... Um, they also make a good Chardonnay. I'm kind of not drinking a lot of white now. No. No, I used to, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of trying not to, because I'm trying to really, really develop my Pinot palette, because I came from a Cabernet and Zin palette. Um, the other Pinots, let me think about this. Uh, oh, I'm not sure about this one. I don't want to speak, like, out of turn, but the. Um, the um, Costa Brown ah. supposedly is the benchmark now. I worked for Dry Creek Kitchen last year. Costa Brown did their um, wine uh, club party at uh, Dry, Dry Creek Kitchen. A very, very good wine um, run by people as personable as you. And they would be just as hyped on your wine as you are about, as you, are, you know, about, about them. Uh, I, um, I, I, you know, I, I almost think more highly of you that you said that, actually. Those guys are really cool. And so are you. Thank you. And that's, just, and that's not, not just because we just partied with your wife and uh, you're, you're <laughs> But uh, I'm, I'm going to let you go with this. Leave me one thing prior to our big content segment tomorrow. Leave me one big message that you want to, one final in summation summary about your philosophy on wine and why people should check it out. We can edit. Okay. We only have a certain amount of property where we're growing our grapes. And I don't want to cloud our grapes with anyone else's to increase our production until I know that the juice is over the top. Fantastic. That's why we do the single vineyard thing. And even though price per bottle is much higher when you do a low production because your costs exponentially are higher, I would love to be able to beef mine up with a killer grape that's equal to what we pull out of our dirt. The terroir is everything. 